Om Sang Saraswati Namaha Namaste. Namaste, everyone. And tonight we're going to begin with verse number 34 in chapter 7. And please recite along with us. Tadbate Himarupabam. Vadi Santa Chatur Dalam, Druta Kimasama Prakyam, Padmanta Prabhijinta Kain, Tadur Dvang and Tanala Prakyam, Shadalam Hirakta Prabham, Vadi Lanta Shad Barnina, Swadishtana Nabutabam, Muladara Shatkonam, Muladara Tatovitu, Swasabdina Paranglingam, Swadistanam Tatovitu, Tadurvang Napi De Satanu, Manipuram Mahaprabham, Megapam Bitu Dabam Cham, Bahute Yamatyam Tatam, Manipad Bina Tatpadam, Manipadman Tatochate, Das Bisha Dalis Yukam, Dari Napalat of Charanditam, Vishnu Nadistitam Padmam, Vishnu Mahabaloka Nakaram, Tadurdwe Nataham Padmam, Mudya Dadi Jasanipam, Kavikanta Lirekam, Patrisha Samadistitam, Tamadi Panalingam, Surya Yuta Samaprabam, Sabda Brahma Bhagyam Shabda Nahatam Tat Dishate Anatta Hatakyam Tat Padmam Munibhi Parikirtitam Ananda Sadanam Tatu Prusha Dishitam Brahm Tadudvam Tu Vishudyakyam Talam Shorash Patrakam Pankajam Sari Shorashri Akyutam Duma Barna Mahaprabham, Vishudanta Nudeya Jan, Jiva Syanga Yansa Glokanyat, Vishudam Padma Matyatam, Akashakya Mahabhutam, Agyat Chakram Tadudvetu, Atmanadisti Tamparam, Agyarasan Krambanam Tatra, Tena Jeti Impakirti Tam, Vitalangansa Sangyutam, Padmanta Tsumabhau Haram, Kvela Satyam Ketu Tadam Tu, Rodini Tu Datur Bhattam, Ivan Padavra Chakrani, Praktani Tapasubhattam, Sahasra Yutam Vindustanam, Kadur Bhavi Vitam, Yedhitakatitam Saram, Yoga Margam Rutam, Adopuraka yogi nap, Yadare a yoga in badap, Kudyami tatare satis, Tamakuncha prabodha kate, Linka be the command heba, Vinducha grand of chaprapa kate, Shambuna tang paran satim, Eki butam bichinta kate, Tatroti tang yato. Datamalaksha Sopamam, Payahi Tvam Dhatam Satim, Mayakyam Yoga Siddhitam, Chatrakabhi Devatastatram, Santapyar Parita Vidarayam, Anandyatina Marginam, Muladharam Tatasudim, Eva Mityapatas Yatyap, Yahanyam Dhani Nishtitam, Purokta Dushita Mantra, Sarve Zidyanti Nandyata Charam Radu Tagotir Uchate Baba Bandhanat Yeguna Santi Deva Tudme Janmatur Yatak Tata Teguna Sataka Pare Bandhi Bandhaksan Yata Ideva Patitan Tata Payudara Namutmam Idamaning Taranakyatu Srinuspa Bhattito Mama, Dikaladya Nipatita, Nivyam Jaito Vidaicha, Tanmayo Bhattichi Pram, 
जीव ब्रह्म ये कर योजना दे अथवा समालं चेतो यदि शिप्रांगा सिद्ध्य थे तदाभाई क्या मित्योगी ना योगी योगा समाप्यसे मधिया खास्ता पादा भाग वही अब तो मधुरे गरगा चितां सताप्य ही मंत्रे स्तनं स्तनं ये जय हरुना विशुद्ध चिता सर्वस्मे रूपे संस्थापकीन बना यावान बाक्योला यं जाते तिव्यं संदेदे पार्ता इंतादाद जिस्तमानु क्या मंत्रे जाप हुमे समाचते मंत्राभ्यसे नक्योगिना के आजादिला यथापते न योगे न बिना मंत्रो न मंत्रे न बिना दिशा Vaya Vrapya Sayogo Ji Brahma Sansidhi Karnam Tamaha Privrite Ye Gato Di Te Nam Jishite Eva Maya Vrito Yadma Manunag Gautri Krita Iti Yoga Vidhi Krishna Sangha Prokta Bhagya Dunam Guru Padesha Toge Ho Nanyatha Sastra Kautivi Om Let's return to verse 34. Now, we were talking about in verse 33, 2 and 33, uh, we were talking about the Bulingam, which is uh, in the Muladhar. And in the Muladhar is the Bijarim. And outside of this Bulingam Yantra, with a golden form containing the various letters Bo, ending with Tho, and then we realize in our Bhakti Matri Kanyas, in the Cosmic Puja, you'll find a, a diagram of all the chakras, and you'll find in the Muladhar is Bo, Sha, Sha and Tha. Those four letters reside in the Muladhara within its four petals around the lotus. The lotus appears as melting gold. Place your awareness there. It is called Muladhara Chakra. And it's the Muladhara because it is the root. It is the side which supports. The Mul which Dharani. Cut the head. Above that, Attached to the stem. So here's the stem going up the Shushumna. And from the Muladhara, there are, there are six petals around uh, the chakra with the luster of a diamond. And the various six letters from Bo to La. Bo, Bo, Ma, Ya, Ra, La. In, are in the excellent Shwadishtan. That's it. Muladhara, Shwadishtan. The base or root supports the six angles, and therefore it is known as Muladhara, the root which supports. It, its word is extremely subtle, and therefore it is known as Swadishtan, one's own place. Swadishtan, uh, you reside yourself. So the muladhara is the base which supports, it's the root that uh, supports. The swadhisthana is your own place. Above that in the region of the navel, the monipur has a great radiance. Clouds are illuminated by lightning and there is manifested great light. And so here's this radiant light like lightning coming to illuminate all the clouds or doubts that would cover the light of wisdom. Uh, just as Vritra the cloud covers Surya the sun, Indra takes his Vajra, his thunderbolt, he smites the cloud, the cloud breaks with a great flash of lightning, and down comes the rain which nourishes, and the light of wisdom is visible once again. So here in the Monipur, many jewels occupy that lotus for which it is known as the lotus of jewels. The Monipur, the, the, all the money, all the jewels are in this, in this place, in this pool. It has ten petals, which are united with the letters from Ga and ending with Pa, Ga, Da, Na, Ta, Ta, 
Bhakta the Nagpur in Thar. Vishnu is situated in this lotus, for which it is known as Vishnu Loka. Above that is the Anahat lotus, which resembles a fountain of flowing streams. So here we are describing the various chakras as we bring the kundalini energy up. We get to take darshan of all these wonderful places in the beginning, uh, beginning from the, from ka and ending with ka. Ka, ka, ga, ga, nya, cha, cha, ja, ja, nya, ta, ka, ka. The twelve wing letters are established on the petals. In the middle is the banalinga, a white symbol of Lord Shiva, resplendent like the sun. So in the anahata, anahata, we have Shiva, just resplendent like the sun. The manifestation of Sabda Brahma, the sound of God, is perceived here in the Anahata, and that is why the Anahata is lotus is most famous among men of wisdom. Remember, Shabda Brahman is the sound of God. So the, the infinite sound we only express it by the syllable Om. And that sound of, sound of God is only cognizable, only uh, perceivable by those who are in the deepest, deepest samadhi or those who are capable of listening to the sound of God. And then the Shabda Brahman manifests as a bindu. It becomes manifest. It's like from Om to Hring. It becomes manifest in existence. And that sub that that, that, that bindu be, manifests itself as a nod, as the subtle body of sound. And the nod is expressed in a bija, which is the closest audible expression of what that subtle sound is saying. And the bija is expressed in shabda with a, with a word. And those are, those are divided into two categories. Shabda is Vedic shabda, words of wisdom, which take us back to shabda Brahman, and Bhautika shabda, those which take us out into the world of duality. So now the path of sound is very, very clearly demarcated. We control all of our Baltica Sabda by refraining from describing the exterior world and submerge our minds in Vedic Sabda, which are words of wisdom which will take us back inside towards our ultimate objective. From the Vedic Sabda we become one with the beach, with the seeds, which are expressible, audibly expressible abbreviations for what is the subtle sound, what is the subtle body. How do you describe it? You describe it with a beach. And through the Nad we move into the Bindu and from the Bindu to the Shabda Brahman and that is the path of the sound of God which is located in the Anahat. And that is why the Anahata is lotus is most famous among men of wisdom. Because you fill your heart with love. And love is the energy which makes us follow those, that vibration from the external to the internal until we become one. This is the residence of bliss wherein the highest Purusha dwells. Above that is the Bishuddha. Chakra with 16 petals comprised of the 16 vowels O A E E U U R R R R A I O A O M A and they are all situated on the petals of the lotus uh, which surround that chakra This is of a smoky color and great luster in the Vishuddha there is great expansion or illumination, which is the hamsalok, the residence of union or freedom of the individual soul. Remember, hum means Ishwar or me, I, aham. And sa means that, all of that is I. Or prakriti, purusham prakriti, I am that. 
In the Vishuddha Lotus, the great elements of Akash, ether is present. The Agni Chakra is situated above that, which is the highest resonance of the soul. In the Agni Chakra are realized the dictates of priorities. And for this reason, it is famous as Agnya, command or order. Agnya Vidya. It will come from here. The very beautiful lotus has two petals inscribed upon which are the letters Hamsha. Above that is the Koilash Chakra. And above that is the Rodini Chakra. And thus the Abdara Chakras have been described to you, O oh, one of excellent vows. So we're going to bring that Kundalini from the Mula Abdara through the Swadishtan to the Manipur. Bring it into the Anahat, into the Bishud, and then up to the Agnya Chakra, the Koilash Chakra, and Rodini Chakra. And thus the Adhara chakras have been described to you of one of excellent vows. The thousand-petaled lotus, the Sahasra, is the residence of the Bindu. Mm? And above that, the exit from which the soul rises. You want to go higher, you've got to leave the bottom. And thus all has been explained of the excellent path of yoga. First, inhaling in the yogic way. Let mind unite in the muladhar. Bring your attention, bring your awareness, focus down in the muladhar and there take darshan of the kundalini shakti. Between the anus and the genital, become aware of the energy by restraining the breath. It's called mulaband. You restrain the breath in the mulaband. Pierce the subtle centers in their orders uh, until the Bindu Chakra is reached. Here we go from the Muladhara to the Swadhisthana. From the Swadhisthana we go to the Manipur. From the Manipur to the Anahatha and the Hanahatha to the Vishuddha. From the Vishuddha to the Agnya Chakra to the Kailash Chakra to the Rodini Chakra until we get to the residence of Bindu. Oh. In the Sahasra, from which that soul rises. Pierce the subtle centers in their order until the Bindu chakra is reached. Conceive a Shambhu Shiva united with her, the highest Shakti, as one being. And this is what is called Moitun in, in the Panchamaka. And when we talk about the tantric sadhana, we talk about the union between Shiva and Shakti, where Shiva and Shakti go on a date. And Shakti comes up from the Muladhara into the Sahasrara, and there they unite in close embrace. The highest Shakti, one with Shiva, one being. In the Bindu Chakra is produced the nectar of immortality, flowing down like a red-colored lack, a lack uh, we call it like a pine pitch. Who can drink that nectar? The energy of Maya attains the perfection of union. It's often called, the, it's one form of Ketri Mudra, where you stick your tongue back for the Uwala. And let the sweetness of that union rip onto your tongue. Who can drink that nectar? The energy of Maya attains the perfection of, of union. There's another meaning to the Kichri Mudra, and that means uh, uh, Urgaya Kash. It means uh, who, who floats up and leaves a connection between the physical body and the earth below. We call it levitation. For the pleasure of the gods residing in the six chakras carry that nectar to each by the reverse path until the muladhara is reached. When you get that nectar from Shiva and Shakti's embrace, bring it down through all the chakras and feed it to all the deities in each chakra until you come to the muladhara again. 
Oh, here we have another practice of a, like the Bipassana, like Adharana, where we were bringing the sensation up and bringing the nutrition down and making a parikram. This is our pilgrimage, a regular round of pilgrimage. We bring up the Kundalini and we bring down the nectar of immortal bliss and feed the deities of each chakra. And this is yoga. Regularly practicing in this way, success is assured. All previous deficiencies will be perfected. The mantras will be attained. There is no other way. Yog sadhana. And yog sadhana doesn't just mean asans. It doesn't just mean pranayam. It means the full ashtanga yoga as a, ser- of s- a series of stepping stones. First, we define the goal. Second, we make the discipline. Third, we train ourselves to sit comfortably. And then we can do pranayama. Then we can bring our senses inside. We can contemplate, meditate, and move into samadhi. This is yoga sadhana as one path. Old age, death and pain, the bondage to the world will be eradicated. Those divine qualities which are in me, the mother of the universe, with those same qualities, the sadhak, the spiritual practitioner will be blessed even within this world and others. That's my promise to you, yogis, who are practicing this yoga sadhana, you will become of the same character, the same quality, the same attributes as the Divine Mother. If you achieve to union, you're one with her. And to be one with her is to assume all of her qualities. Thus is the explanation, my child, and remember the Divine Mother is explaining the Himalayas, of the excellent system of retaining breath. Now hear from me how to conduct Dharan. Cutting asunder location, time, and others, and fixing consciousness in divinity. On my manifestation, one immediately realizes the unity between the individual soul and the universal soul. Okay, here we are. We're practicing this dharana. We've achieved the pratyahara. We've brought our senses inside. And now, here we are focusing on one pilgrimage. Or the other. Remember in the last example of Dharana, we were bringing the sensation, the divinity, the divine vibration from through the feet, up to the knees, up to the, uh, through the trunk and up to the, through the uh, Shushumna. And we were bringing it to the Sahasrara and higher. And now in this dharana, we're bringing the kundalini shakti uh, all the way up to the sahasrara. We're going to drink the nectar of immortal bliss and then bring it down and feed all the gods that are residing in, in the chakras, in the centers of energy. If you do this, you immediately realize the unity between the individual soul and the universal soul. Otherwise... If one does not easily or speedily attain to this consciousness, then it is possible for a yogi to practice by means of avayava yoga. And we've discussed this in various uh, uh, chapters. Now we're concentrating from limb to limb. Seeing my lovely smile, my feet and other parts, O mountain, the wise counsel that consciousness should be concentrated at these various places again and again until victory is attained. When the objects of consciousness become purified, then establish the mind on my universal form. So here we place a murti, an image of divinity in front of us and see her smile. And then looking at her smile, I go look at her feet. Because that's the residence of all of my devotion, go to her feet. And then she smiles. And now I've got the feet and the smile. And now I can concentrate from limb to limb and see all the parts. And then unite the parts into the whole. 
And this becomes my meditation. This is another form of dharana. It's called avayab yoga. And by seeing all the parts, we establish her universal form. Until the mind is not dissolving into the goddess according to this method, O mountain, the wise counsel that contemplation of the chosen deity, looking at her, thinking about her, reading about her, studying about her, thinking about what the meaning and the application of her various attributes could mean for my life. Contemplation of the chosen deity, japa, reciting the mantras, and reciting the scriptures. Homa, the fire ceremony. All these forms of worship, these practices should be continued. Don't stop practicing until you get there. This is the way. By means of practice of the mantra and of yoga, the objective of knowledge becomes conceived of as wisdom. I don't just want a lot of, to memorize a number of unrelated facts. I want wisdom. Without yoga, there is no mantra, and without mantra, there is no yoga. And we teach a system of mantra yoga where we perform mantra with pranayam through the duration of every asan posture. So and we have on our, uh, on our website uh, some articles about mantra yoga. Uh, but without yoga there is no mantra because the objective of, of every mantra is to bring us to yoga. And without mantra, there is no yoga. Mantra is the process of mantrayate, that which takes away the mind. If you don't lose your mind, you're not in yoga. You're doing exercises rather than meditation. Both practiced together are the cause for the attainment of the supreme divinity. When a house is filled with darkness, only by a light can the contents within a jar be seen. Uh, if, if, if the house is filled with darkness, you can't see anything inside. No individual forms. All you see is the darkness. Just so with the continuous changes in Maya, the soul is hidden. And humanity only moves towards the objects of sense. Thus, now the system of yoga has been explained by me, along with all its limbs. You should learn more instructions from a guru. No other scriptures, not even 10 million of them, will give you the realization. You can read about it as much as you want <laughs> You can talk about it as much as you want. But until you sit with a guru who's practicing herself or himself, and they're actually doing the practice and demonstrating for us how we can also do the practice, no, no amount of book reading is going to satisfy that criteria. It won't bring us to the ultimate experience. Oh. Do we have any questions? Swami, I have a question from yesterday's class. Yes, the please. Chapter. Yes. In verse 23, Swami. Okay. It talks about Pratyahara. Yes. The power to withdraw the senses from those objects is talked of as Pratyahara. Yes. In the context of our recitation of the Chandi Pata scripture, where our eyes are open and we are reading the scripture, how does that lead to Pratyahara? And how do we go from Pratyahara to Dharana in when reciting, reciting a scripture because the eyes are open? Very, very good question and very, very simple answer. The first step is to create a cloister for our senses. We have bound our senses, limited our senses within this cloister. We call it an ashram. 
Uh, so now our minds are not going outside the gates. Now, when we sit for recitation, we have cloistered our senses within the temple so that everything that we perceive through the senses is divine. Now, when we're reciting a scripture, we're looking at the book, we're looking at the fire, we're looking at the deity. And now we've cloistered, a cloister of senses has become even smaller, more refined. Pretty soon you know what's in the book. And you just look at the deity. And you can recite the entire scripture. And after some time, the deity closes your eyes and she recites the scripture. So from Pratyahara, we have created this cloister for our senses and by cloistering our senses, we become more refined and more subtle and more focused. And thereby we eliminate all the external, extraneous chatter that's going on in the mind. Are there other questions? Namaste, Marsha Ma. Absolutely there are, Marsha. There are so many various uh, combinations. I would re like to uh, point you to a resource uh, in the book that we wrote called the Srima, the Guru and the Goddess. In the Kashyap Sutras are a number of Bij mantras for negative qualities that we want to get control of and for positive qualities that we want to replace the negativities with. And I would suggest that you read that section. If you send us an email, I'll point to the exact page number for you. But otherwise, uh, yes, if we can put our ira pingala in harmony with our shushum, within the shushumna and make the merudanda straight, uh, we, uh, by, just by that very effort, we eliminate a whole number of negativities which are perplexing us because of our poor postures or our bad habits. Be, just by being conscious of our posture, we eradicate a number of negativities. Uh, so yes, this mantra yoga can be applied with various uh, uh, therapy techniques as well. You'll find very, very positive benefits. Namaste, Wendy Ma. Nice to have you home. They're not really an addition because uh, Patanjali uh, uh, calls the first five yamas yam. And he calls the second five niyam. Uh, so actually they're all included. It's just a different way of describing them. Uh, so I, I, I don't believe that they are really in opposition or confrontation. However, the Devi Gita is an... Ex uh, 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 remember the sutras. It, it, uh, the sutras are, are, are like a, 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 an outline, a, a cheat notes. If you were going to give a lecture to a, a, a group of a, a, a respectable uh, academics, you wouldn't be able to write out the his whole speech, but you would certainly write out the main topics that you want to discuss. And that's a sutra. 
It's a, it's a crib. It's an outline uh, of, the, of the basic topics that you want to speak about. The Devi Gita is an expanded version in poetry which I- I illuminates all of the subjects that it wants to describe and it gives a commentary with it as well. So, you know, there are two different branches of literature. Uh, so, uh, the uh, uh, Yoga Sutras are very brief. Uh, they are not e- extremely poetic, but they are very succinct. And they give the lecturer, uh, uh, Patanjali, uh, the, the, the main topics that he wants to cover in his presentation. The Devi Gita goes into detail. It says, sing this, listen to it poetically. It's got rhyme, rhythm, and reason. <laughs> and you can inculcate these qualities into your sadhana. So that's the difference between the two types of literature. Right? Yes, you have Ushama in Canada. Namaste, Ushama. Swamiji, this is such an amazing text. Why would you not better know? Has it not been translated before? Uh, actually, this is the first translation into English that I've ever seen. Uh, I did see an attempt uh, from uh, Swami Vigyanananda to, in, to translate the entire Srimad Devi Bhagavatam, uh, 18,000 verses, and he did it in Old Indian English, uh, and he was a tremendous inspiration and helper to me. But this uh, is the first uh, uh, of the translations of the, the Devi Gita uh, and the application to our modern sadhana. So, uh, as I said in my preface, preface uh, the, the word order of the sentences really corresponds to the word order of the Sanskrit. So, that's why I wanted to do our commentary on video rather than to sit down and try and write a commentary. It's just too much. But you're right. It's really a great scripture. And it gets even better when you get to the end. <laughs> I don't want to re, re, uh, remove the suspense. <laughs> Thank you, Swami. A Swami question from Rolf from Mountain Namaste, Rolf. Rolf says that in verse 21 it says, I am one at least the highest quality practice should be continued. Um, is, are we talking about continuing the practice during a particular session of Jaka? Or are we talking about an attainment that is both. Both. I, I, rough all the way. First of all, if we sit down for one session of japa, we want to per- pursue that japa, not just till we get the number of rounds that we promised to, uh, and committed to, but we want to achieve that highest quality so we go beyond the sankalpa into the all japa japa where we're no longer counting the mantras. The mantra is the fact of my life. We want to move into the highest quality, meaning that nirguna, without quality, beyond qualities, of the quality of water, perfect equilibrium, perfect balance. So this is the highest quality. Now, from lifetime to lifetime, from sankalpa to sankalpa, from lifetime to lifetime, we want to continue this practice until we achieve that total realization. It's a don't stop. You'll, you'll get there. Keep going. Agija. Agija. Namaste, Gorima. Absolutely, Gauri, without mantra there is no yoga, without yoga there is no mantra. Please, don't stop the mantra until the mantra stops you. Don't give up the mantra. Continue your job and continue the mantra and focus your your awareness on the various parts of the body. If you can stay on one part for a long time, stay there. But if your mind wants to roam, don't go outside, go to another part. Stay in the smallest paradigm of reality that you can. 
Namaste Nandama. The body becomes drenched with sweat in this 20 practice. Yes. Uh, not necessarily. You don't want to look for it. Uh, maybe you want to turn on the air conditioner or open a window. But there might be other reasons that your body is drenched in sweat. But if it occurs, then don't be afraid of it. Because you'll find that there are various kriyas which occur which are not incited or which are not put on, which we're not seeking to, in, uh, to, to, to bring about. It's not a, an outcome that we're trying to uh, uh, make happen. Our outcome that we want to make happen, Nandama, is to go inside and become completely submerged in unity, in oneness. Now, in that process, you may come... Uh, 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 have these types of kriyas. You may become filled with sweat. You may become, uh, you, you may start to shake. You may tremble. And you may even rise up off the ground. That's not what we're looking for. That's not it. What it is, is neti neti. <laughs> it's beyond that. It's way beyond that. These are a little in the lowest stages. You may, you may start to sweat. In the middle stages, you may start to shake. But it's not about, I'm going to shake, rattle, and roll. So please, don't mistake the manifestations for uh, a signpost in your attainment. That's not what we're looking for. The signpost of your attainment will be when you are radiant with love and light and you will love everything you're doing and you're doing it because you love. Parvati from Sacramento is asking which mantra should one use? Namaste Parvati Ma. You should use the mantra that you receive from your guru. And if your guru has not as yet given you a mantra, you should use the Om Namah Shivaya. Because Shiva is the guru of all the gurus. And if you use Shiva's mantra, he will bring to you the guru which will tell you which mantra is most appropriate for which scripture and which type of practice that you're doing. Now it's not the same mantra for every type of practice. You get a guru mantra, and then there's a mool mantra of every scripture. And so you practice that. So please, Parvati Mom, please use Om Namah Shiva. And tell Shiva that you're ready for, that when you learn the five letters, you'll be ready for the next one, the next step. And the has a follow-up question. She wants to know how long should we stay in each path? Forever! Or as long as you can. Don't leave. You know what the alternative is? When you leave the mother, then you become a citizen of the world again. Ad nauseum. So, stay there as long as you possibly can. Until you can stay there without leaving. And then I'll say, hey, she's got it. She's reached the highest quality. Wendy has a question on verse 63. If you have to learn directly from a guru, what happens when the guru has left their body? Then what do you do? Do you ask a disciple of the guru to help you? Oh, the, the guru will be with you always. The guru won't, will only leave his manifested existence. But certainly other disciples and satsang will complete the mission of the guru. And you will become the guru yourself. Inculcate his qualities. Inculcate her qualities and characteristics. Take her attributes, her attitudes, her practice, her way of sitting. Whatever is appropriate for you. And then integrate that into your, it's your spiritual sadhana. 
Then take your, you can bounce off ideas from other disciples and then you can consult other sources of inspiration. You'll find when you are a sincere spiritual seeker, you're going to find friends along the path. We're not going alone. There's a satsang wherever there's sat. Wherever there's truth, wherever there are true seekers, there are, there's a satsang. So find the satsang that gives you the inspiration. It could even be tuning online and, and, and have satsang with, in the Devi Mandir. Uh, there are so many sources of inspiration. Uh, don't feel yourself to be alone. The guru will continue to give you instructions. Remember, the guru is Brahma. The Guru is Vishnu, the Guru is Deva Maheshwara, the Guru is Sakshat. All the Gurus are one Guru, there's only one Guru and that's Shiva. Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva are the Gurus and the, all the rest of the little Gurus are, are little links in the chain which bring us to Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. So the fact that the Guru has left his or her body is of really little consequence in our proceeding along our path. Well, we already discussed that. We were going to purak. We're going to breathe. Uh, inhalation is the purak. Kumbak is the retention. Rechak is the exp expulsion or exhalation. So here we are in the yogic way. We've got a formula. We talked about this in our last session. The various formulas for performing pranayam. Uh, the classic uh, pranayam is one, four, two. One purak, inhalation. One mantra. Use the mantra as the means or the measure of counting. Kumbak is four. Retain the breath for four recitations of the mantra. And exhalation is called rechak. And expel the mantra two times. And we can use the exhalation as the audible portion of the mantra. So let's use the mantra Om Namo Shivaya. That's Parvati's mantra. And I'm sure she won't mind if we borrow it from her. And we'll inhale Om Namo Shivaya one time. We'll hold it four times. And we'll exhale twice, reciting audibly, Om Namo Shivaya, Om Namo Shivaya. One, four, two, or any proportion thereof. So that we will be able to expand the length of our cycle of breath. And this is the yogic way. Now we talked about other types of pranayama, making the inhalation equal to the exhalation. We talked about the, the pranayama during recitation of scripture. There are many forms of pranayama. This is just one of the yogic ways. Yes, please. Rolf, uh, I would start with uh, the uh, uh, the bij mantra of each chakra. Uh, we call that the Bhut Shuddhi. Uh, and re if you look in the Cosmic Puja book or in the uh, Shiva Puja book, uh, both of those books have a, a discourse on Bhut Shuddhi, and you'll find that in the Muladhara, the the the, the bij mantra is long. And in the Swadhisthan is uh, 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 Wong. In the Manipur is Rang. In the Nahat is uh, 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 Yang. In the Vishuddha is Hang. And in the Yajna Chakra is Om. And it goes Rang, Wong, Rang, Yang, Rang. up 
And then, Om And you bring it down. And using the beach mantras of each chakra, you permeate the mool, the root vibration of that chakra, and then you can begin to understand who is the deity and why is the yantra of that chakra colored the way it is, and what letters are on the petals around that chakra, and how do I integrate that information into my behavior. That would be a wonderful place to start. Yes, it is. Yes, it is a Vedic in the world. And the Pushra is asking me, Swamiji, can we please say a little more of, about the Kailasha and Rodini chakras? Thank you. Uh, Kailash, of course, is where Shiva lives with Shakti. So after you get to the Agnya Chakra where you, uh, you, you, you give all order, orders and commands and understand the organization of our creation and organi organization of our place in the creation, we move to the union of Shiva Shakti in the Koilash. And the Kailash actually is a generic term. It's also a chakra, but it also re it re refers to the Sahasra. And it's the whole area from the above the uh, Agya chakra to the Sahasra is all called Kailash. But Kailash as a chakra refers to uh, just above the Agya chakra. So if you have the Agya chakra here, you have the Kailash chakra here. Rodini is radiant with illumination. She is illuminating light, radiant light. It's like chapter 11 of the Bhagavad Gita. If a light of a thousand suns were to breathe, the, nothing could compare with the brilliance of the light which Krishna radiated when he showed himself to Arjuna. So that's the Rodini chakra. And then you come to the Sahasra where you enter into the Bindu. And then come out. I would ignore them and let them run their course and focus our attention on our primary objective, which is to be one with her. That would be my counsel. If the Kriyas come, there are minor distractions that we're going to try to overcome. I really want you. I don't want more experiences in the world. I don't want to go to the, to the disco or the cocktail party and say, everybody, I have this experience and that experience. I don't want experiences for me. I just want you. So these experiences come and they sort of have a tendency to push us off the path and send us down some tangential path. And our challenge is to remain on the path, remain dear, dritti, steer, unmovable. We are going to be constant and unfailing in our relentless pursuit of you. Because that's our objective, Mother. You're the goal. Not to have an experience that I can talk about, but to know you and to unite with you. Yes. Indra in the Muladhara, Boruna in the Swadishtan, Agni in the Manipur, uh, Bayu in the Anahat, um, um, uh, Shom in the uh, Vishud Chakra, uh, uh, Rudra in the Agnya Chakra, and then comes Kailash Chakra where Shiva and Shakti reside, Rodini in the Rodini Chakra, and the Guru is in the Sahasra. Yes, Parvati Ma. Union 
nothing is achieved without a body between death and life. But that is not the same union as self-realization. Self-realization occurs when you're in a body and we achieve that same state of detachment as the out-of-body experience. So, uh, it, now that wisdom, that knowledge, that understanding, that experience of divinity will continue along with us no matter what manifestation we take. If we are, uh, our experience of the limitless, the infinity, the infinity of, of the divinity is only in the period between death and birth, then when we come back into manifestation after birth, we will forget that experience entirely as we, all, as we obviously have in this life and have to start all, working on it all over again. Namaste. Jan is asking what are the specific effects of each of the different Pranayama 1, 4, 2, verses 1 to 1, and then she needs to use to get counting Japha Pranayama. How fast do you count? It seems that there are a whole variety of Dabas as students one can count. There are, you're absolutely right, Jan. Namaste. Uh, you're absolutely right. There, there are a whole variety, a whole number of speeds at which you can count. For example, you could say Om Namah Shivaya or you could say Om Namah Shivaya, 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 Om Namah Shivaya. The important thing is that you do count and maintain the regularity. And each one of the different pranayams has a different function and it has a different utility and it has a different time and place and circumstance when it's appropriate. And uh, it, it will have to do that uh, understanding which is most appropriate and which function uh, in a personal relationship. Uh, it's very to do, difficult to do long distance. You'll want to sit close. And that's what an Upanishad means. Upa asana. I'm sitting close. Uh, it, it, it's a, a little bit difficult to do uh, uh, in a few minutes on a camera. Not much. Uh, they're both meaning uh, 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 compassion. Uh, we also use, uh, we have so many different kinds of intelligence, so many different kinds of love. Sanskrit is so rich. They have so many terms that we would call synonymous in English, but they're all just a little bit different. Yes, Nandama. Yes, ma'am. She says that uh, in verse 46 talks about the mountain with the cave within. Can somebody please talk about this? What is the cave of the heart? Well, it's the cave inside. It's moving into the chakra. It's moving into that sacred space inside. And where you're well protected and well fortified and totally isolated. It's like every yogi moves into their cave. And that's what the cave within is signifying, Nanda. Om Sang Saraswati Namaha Namaste.